The iPhone 14 just came out yesterday, and what I wanna know, and I'm sure you do as well, is if it's good enough for sports videography. Because up until now, I've always said that phones were kind of a last resort when it comes to filming sports, but this one, the 14, I think this could be the one. And I'm so optimistic about it that I'm actually thinking of buying one. A couple things before we start, I'm only going to talk about the camera and camera related features here today because everything else is irrelevant to sports videography. And two, there's a lot of technical information to go through that I don't want to get wrong. So I got some notes with me today. I'll be honest, in the last week or so, I've watched a few videos about the iPhone 14, what people thought it was going to be like, uh, leaked information, rumors, all that stuff. And the one thing that certainly got my attention was uh, the possibility of being able to film video in 8K. But first of all, you need to understand that not all 8K footage is created equal. And I'm sure you guys would know this from, from 4K. For example, if you look at the 4K footage of a GoPro, that doesn't look nearly as good as the 4K footage of a mirrorless camera like the one that I'm using right now and this is because of the size of the sensor. A GoPro has a much smaller sensor and so does a phone. So as excited as I was about the possibility of filming in 8K with my phone, I was, um, let's just say I was containing my excitement. But ultimately, there was no 8K announcement. There is no 8K on the iPhone 14 or iPhone 14 Pro for that matter. So yeah, not this year, unfortunately, um, maybe next year. In the meantime, there are a few upgrades specifically for videographers in the iPhone 14 that are worth mentioning. So that's where my notes come into the picture. On the base model, the main camera has a larger sensor, which will improve the overall quality. And uh, also combined with a new f1.5 aperture lens, this will make the camera much better in low light conditions, 49% better to be exact. And the other big improvement is a new action mode that's basically a stabilizer. And the idea is that you don't really need a gimbal anymore to move around or even run with your camera. But here's the thing, um, I don't want to shit on this thing because obviously I haven't used it yet, but I think it's fair to assume that this is not going to be optical stabilization, it's going to be digital, and if that's the case, I'm sure it's going to do a good enough job with little jitters and things like that, but as far as running with the camera is concerned, uh, personally, I would uh, really like to see what it's like firsthand before getting rid of my gimbal. Meanwhile, on the Apple 14 Pro models, things start getting pretty interesting. There's a brand new 2000 nits display, and that basically means that your display is much brighter now. That's twice as bright as before, and the highest peak brightness of any smartphone. So if you've been filming soccer or football during the day, I don't need to tell you how helpful that is. There's also an A16 chip in these phones, which has a much better CPU performance than any other phone on the market, apparently. And that's not going to help you with the filming side of things. But if you edit on your phone, your exports are going to be faster. Your overall experience is going to be better. And it's also going to allow um, editing app developers to push things a bit further, maybe add a few features, new effects, that sort of thing. The Pro models also have a 65% larger sensor, which makes them two times better in low light conditions than the iPhone 13 Pro. And lastly, the cinematic mode that was introduced in the iPhone 13, but was only available in 1080p, will now be available in 4K as well in the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. So to answer the original question, is the iPhone 14 good enough for sports videography? Um, this is kind of a tough one because as a professional sports videographer, um, I have quite high standards uh, for the quality of my image. So it's probably still a no for me at this point personally. But if you're a parent looking for a convenient way to film your kid's soccer game, or if you're an up and coming videographer that can't really afford a mirrorless camera plus lenses plus everything else plus a phone, 
maybe this is good enough. Keep in mind that this is a camera that can shoot 4K in ProRes, which is a great codec. And also if you can avoid to zoom in digitally, but instead uh, carefully switch between the three lenses, that means you can zoom in 2X and 3X without losing any quality. So ultimately, I think that if you're already happy with the quality you're getting uh, filming with an iPhone 12 or 13, and I'm not talking about the quality you're getting filming someone up close that isn't moving, I'm talking about filming movements, uh, you know, at least 15, 20 feet away from you. If that sort of uh, filming, uh, uh, the quality to you looks good right now, um, definitely getting an iPhone 14 Pro model will improve that. It will look awesome. You'll love it. You'll be impressed with all the sports videography that you achieved that way. But the base model, though, I don't think that the jump in quality is going to be that much. So personally, if you already have a 12 or 13, I would stick with that. Um, so I guess at the end of the day, it all becomes a price thing because, yeah, obviously the pro models are more expensive. But either way, I plan on testing my theory. So I recently got this phone rig from Small Rig. Also got this Schemaphone microphone made specifically for smartphones. I'm also testing filming apps that allow you to control things like shutter speed, ISO, all that stuff. And I'm about to order a brand new iPhone 14 Pro Max. So as soon as the phone gets here, I'm going to put all this together, go to a few sporting events and find out once and for all how far I can take my sports videography skills with a phone. So make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss that. Otherwise, thank you again for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.